Welcome to Lost Without Japan, a travel podcast about the life changing experiences of exploring Japan and those moments we would be lost without. For your listening pleasure, allow me to introduce your very own Kanko Gaido, Michael. Welcome to this week's episode of Lost Without Japan, a podcast based on Japan and your Lost Without moment. This is your director of travel for TKIC Studio Productions, coming to you with positive thoughts and excitement for your next journey to Japan and his own return in summer 2023. I'd like to thank you for giving me a bit of your time today. And I truly hope this podcast finds you in a good place or on the path to a better one, no matter how it may seem at this moment. My belief is that we could all use a beacon like this one in our lives, help guide us during these times. And my hope is that Japan, along with this show, will become that for you. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. If you're a returning Lost Without listener, thank you again for your time and for joining us once again. As always, the advertising I include with my shows is done for free and is to help continue to promote the friends of the show that we've interviewed in the past. If you're able to help the show and its goals, you can join the show's Patreon and help work towards my goal of getting an additional person to help edit the show, which would allow for me to put out more content and episodes each month. If you're unable to help financially, I would appreciate you just sharing this show with friends and family that you think might enjoy our interviews and day trip ideas. Let's start today's show on Gifu with some positive mental imagery, and let's imagine that today is the time for you to make your way to Gifu. Before your bus leaves from Komaki, remember to double check you have all of your luggage, passports, and phone with you before you get out of the Lost Without Japan rideshare. You've made it. Today is the day you continue your journey throughout Japan. As you ready for leaving from Komaki and board bus 65 from the Komaki to Yakusho Mei stop, go ahead and take a few deep breaths and come along with us and your tour group as we make sure your journey to Gifu is as wonderful as possible, whether it's your first trip or a return trip to this wonderful city so you can make your very own Lost Without Moments. As you pass through the ticket gate, make sure to stay with your tour group, and let's see how your preparation for your next trip is going. Remember, you can always reach out to the show at lostwithoutjapan at gmail.com or at lostwithoutjapan on Instagram. As always, remember you have access to the show document that has information on Japan's past shows, all sorts of things to help you plan your own journey or see the recommendations we've made in past shows. How are your Dream Comes True saving accounts going? Hopefully you're seeing this begin to grow or forgotten about it and are pleasantly surprised at the progress that you're making. Maybe some of you are fortunate enough to go ahead and buy yen for your next trip at this time and just stockpiling away for your adventure. But if you're not, it's okay, because remember, no amount is too small. All that matters is that we're taking that first step or continuing to move forward together. Feel free to take advantage of your travel planner at any time for support or just so we can celebrate your successes together. What are you looking to purchase next? For my next trip to Japan that I'm going to be making next summer with my son, as Japan is finally opening for tourists, is an Insta360 X3 camera that I'm hoping to be able to use not only to share some things with Patreon members or through my Instagram account, but also just to have some memories that I can share with my son and something, you know, that we could look back. Really excited about how far this technology has come along and how we could watch this video together and pick out the things we want to see and maybe notice some other things that maybe we didn't as we're walking along. I have some bike trips and tours and paths and hiking and just 
truly excited at all the opportunities that could come from this. Now, remember to take advantage of the show's link to my recommendations for items to purchase for your trip to Japan. I am truly thankful for the interactions and recommendations that I've been so lucky to have come from you and share with all our listeners this last year. It's so much fun to see our community begin to grow. As always, today's stamp to take you directly to our talk on Gifu can be found on the show's Google Doc. Link to this document can be found in today's show's notes. Truly feel lucky to have each other on this journey, and I'm looking forward to both of us supporting each other as our dreams and goals come true. Before pulling into the Imazawacho station, let's move on to today's show and learn a little bit about the city of Gifu. Gifu is located in the Gifu Prefecture of Japan. JR Central's Tokaido Main Line runs through the city, making an easy trip from Nagano or Tokyo. You can also hop a train and directly make your way to Chubu Centraire International Airport. Gifu is currently the 41st largest city in Japan, with around 411,000 people for its population. I know that most of our tour group will arrive in Gifu from Komaki. For this trip, you can expect it to take an hour and 20 minutes to get you to the Imazawacho bus stop in Gifu, and it will cost you around 840 yen to do so. For the rest of our group that's traveling directly from Tokyo, Gifu ends up being around a 4-hour, 10-minute trip by car. One example of an itinerary has me heading out of Tokyo Station, where trains depart pretty much every 15 minutes. So you can truly make what works best for you and your plans be the choice for your departure and take you directly to Nagano. From Nagano, you'll take a 22-minute trip by train directly to Gifu. As was the case of Komaki, I could easily look into visiting Gifu either before or after visiting Nagano, if time allowed in my tribal itinerary. Total cost without benefit of the JRL pass is between $66 to $102 with current conversion rates. One other option is flying from Tokyo to Chiba Centraire Airport from Haneda Airport and then taking a train for 11 stops to Mitsu Gifu Station. Flights range from $65 to $280 depending on time, date, and day that you depart. Your flight would just take you about an hour. Follow up with another hour for your train to arrive in Gifu. Depending on pricing when you book your trip, this might be a great option for those of you that are short on time and have the funds and want to make the most of your time in Japan. Night buses at the Yeso exit of Tokyo Station range from $22 to $70 US and take about an eight-hour trip from Tokyo. Link for the night buses, though, through JRL is located in our show resource page under JR Bus Kanto. One thing to take into account when visiting Gifu is that I could not find any information about coin lockers for storing your luggage as you run around. So I definitely reach out to your lodging to see if you have the option of dropping things off before you run around and explore this city. Gifu, for me, is a perfect option for getting outside of known tourist areas and seeing what Japan is like for more of a day-to-day normal experience. And if you're visiting in 2023, you can experience the Hijikara Fire Festival. This annual festival takes place on the second Saturday in April at the Tejikara Shrine, where men carry portable shrines with firecrackers exploding from them. This festival also happens in another part of Gifu City in in October. You can expect food stalls, games, and such different festival activities that encompasses several blocks around the shrine. This is one festival worth Googling to see photos from past festivals. Another festival that takes place in Gifu is the Chunichi Newspaper Nagawara Fireworks Festival. Fireworks are set off along the Nagara River between the Nagaraga Bridge and Kinka Bridge using Mount Kinka as a backdrop for this amazing time. Want to have an excuse to hear yukata in Japan and enjoy festival foods? My friend, this would be for you then. If so, 
these fireworks usually take place around 7.15 to 8.45 p.m. on the last Saturday of July. As of now, it is scheduled for 2023, and I would definitely look into adding this for myself after how much I enjoyed the last firework festival that I went to on my last visit. These are not the only festivals that take place in Gifu, and I will include a link that covers these festivals that take place throughout the year. Navigating Gifu will require the use of buses and travel by foot. When looking to navigate through the city, the option of a train was not readily present, but that leaves taxis as a significantly more expensive way of travel. I would check at the bus stations, see if they sell a one-day or multiple-day pass when you visit, although at this time, there's, that is not an option. Your JR pass might be good for travel through these buses, though, so it's at least worth looking into. That being said, though, none of these buses are going to set you back too much as a one-way trip was 220 yen. Before we start talking about today's day trip, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Neol Private House, the Shogun Experience, for a fully immersive getaway in the mountains of Nara or just an intimate bespoke lunch. Neol Private House has got you covered. Go back in time to the Edo period, dress up as a samurai and fight off ninja, all in one private experience. Check out their website at neold.co.jp or Instagram at neold.jp to learn how you can experience this and so much more. The Google Doc for this show that includes a map link for locations covered in today's show in the notes for those of you who'd like to follow along is always available for you. We are going to use the middle of November to give you potential lodging costs for your trip. And as usual, I went ahead and spent the day prior in Gifu and have a travel itinerary with some other honorable mentions as well that you could pull from and change your day trip to Gifu to be what you want to for yourself. I usually like to grab something to eat before I begin exploring a new city or check into my lodging. I always like to look for something unique to begin my experience, especially when it's my first time in a city. Near the Imazawa Cho bus stop, I was able to find exactly that and began my exploration with some coffee and a light meal. I can happily recommend that you start your journey at La Petisserie Ribbon, a woman-owned pastry shop that has done business in Gifu since 1970. Calling this location a pastry shop really doesn't do it justice, though. It truly offers a lot more than you think. In the morning from 9 to 11, they offer two sets for breakfast. Set A at the moment is a salad and sandwich with fruit and coffee. Set B is a salad, pastry, and a piece of toast covered in tomato sauce and cheese. Think pizza bread. From 11.30 to 2 p.m., the number of sets increases to four with a sandwich set. Ladies set, gratin set, and a sweet set. For the sandwich set, you have a page to select from with your choice of favorite drink. The ladies set is a sandwich salad mini dessert for an additional 500 yen, a drink of your choice as well. The gratin combo is a chicken, cheese, and breadcrumb dish. It is cooked until the top is crispy with a mini sandwich and salad. The drink of your choice charge is an additional 650 yen for this set. The sweet set looks to have a sandwich up to 420 yen cost, a mini dessert if you'd like up to 420 yen, and your choice of drink fee is 650 yen. Sandwiches range in price from 350 yen to 600 yen and could include ham, egg, cheese, fruit, nori, tuna, tomato, shrimp, or chicken. Those that know me know that I really love a classic club sandwich, which is toasted bread, bacon, lettuce, cheese, and tomato. Seeing an American club as an option really makes me want to arrive when lunch starts so that I could see how it stacks up to what I'm used to. Some of these sandwiches are toasted and some are not. Desserts simply look to be amazing, and I don't need much of a reason to order more than one, but this location has a dessert set that offers a 50 yen discount for the most expensive cake you order if you get two or more. 
The snack set offer mini Anamitsu, a dessert that dates back to the Meiji period, where there's small cubes of agar jelly and a white translucent jelly made from red algae. Mini soft serve and a cake from the display case are at 190 yen or less. Drinks can be added for just 150 yen or more. And if that's not enough to offer a parfait set, offering your choice of chocolate, ogura, the red bean paste, or fruit parfait ranging from 550 to 600 yen. There's no English menu, but Google Translate and your phone scanning the menu will help you get by. Your drinks will not be free refill, but some will be half price with an additional drink. This is something to pay attention through your visit to Japan as a whole, as you can sometimes be caught off guard if you're not aware that this is common practice. Again and again in the reviews, I see that it's recommended that you arrive early to this location to help ensure you have the ch- as many choices as possible, as popular items can sell out quite early in the day. And with the pictures, I can see exactly why. One nice perk before we move on to our next location is that there's parking available nearby. Have you ever wanted to look like you climbed a mountain without actually climbing one? Gifu provides you, your Instagram and TikTok account, just that with a two-minute cable car ride or a one-hour hike to the top of Mount Kina in Gifu Castle which will allow you to add even more amazingness to your next activity for the day. You can get to this location by utilizing a 100 yen bike rental store that's outside the Kano exit of the JR Gifu station, ride a bus from the station from platform 12 or 13, just double check your Google Maps and or bus destination, and get off at Gifu Koen. And if you are in a group, You can get there by taxi for about 1,600 yen each way. If you don't speak Japanese, you can go to the tourist information station at Gifu Station and ask them for assistance in getting a taxi, as most taxi drivers may not speak English. At this great spot, you can enjoy a free observation deck that gives you an amazing view of the city and other surrounding mountains. There's also a small museum and Gifu Castle. One thing to be aware of is there's sadly no wheelchair access for the castle or for the gondola, and there's a short but steep stair between the cable car station and the castle itself. Round trip fee for the ropeway gondola during the day is 1,100 yen round trip for anyone who is 12 or older, and 550 yen for children 4 to 11. At night, you can still access the viewing deck And from pictures I've seen, I would totally take advantage of this viewing opportunity during a moon for a reduced fee of just 900 yen for 12 and above or 450 yen for those that are under that age. If you're fortunate enough to have a car, you can park at the base of the mountain for free for an hour or 310 yen if you go over. The entrance fee for the castle and museum is just 200 yen for anyone who's 16 or older or just 100 yen for children ages 4 to 15. What you're truly paying for, though, unless you're a history buff or into concrete replicas of wooden castles, is an even more amazing view from the top of this castle. For those of you that chose to bike to the base or hike to the top, there's also a vending machine for drinks once you've reached the top of the mountain. Three tips from locals say to wear comfortable shoes or hiking boots to bring bug spray and avoid the quickest hiking trail unless you are really physically fit as even some high school students and university students said they were quite winded after taking that route if you choose you can also visit an insect and butterfly museum at the base of the mountain as well it was mentioned by more than a few people and i really think that i'll give it a look when I get back to Gifu and check into my lodging so I can drop my travel backpack off. If you choose, you can also visit an insect and butterfly museum at the base of the mountain as well. For now, though, I'm going to look to get back to Gifu and check into my lodging so I can drop my travel backpack off. After dropping off my luggage, I wanted to head back out and continue exploring. 
before enjoying my very own private open air onsen bath for just $200 US a night or 26,647 yen a night per person, including a breakfast at Juhachiro Ryokan. It is part of the Nagara Onsen Hot Area that incorporates seven Ryokan that are all along the Nagara River. I will include the link to the available Ryokan in this area so you can choose which one works best for you. One thing that seems to be a part of all the reviews for Juhachiro Ryokan is that staff are extremely friendly, and if you're fortunate enough to have the private outdoor bath with your room, various minerals are added and have a wonderfully relaxing smell. One other consistent message is that breakfast is a highlight of many people's trips. Some reviews mention some of the staff may be able to speak English, but it is limited. One perk with staying here is that you can book your Coromont fishing adventure with your stay that leaves from its own private dock area. Apparently also, they have a selection of sake that is local for you to purchase, but you are required to purchase an entire bottle to do so. One drawback is there's no local restaurants or convenience stores, so you may want to bring some snacks of your own for your stay. In order to get the private bath and fishing add-on, you'll need to book directly through them and their site Major travel sites will not give you this as an option, and you'll be booking mainly just a room. They do offer free water, juice, or coffee till nighttime in the lobby as well. One of my favorite things to experience is food from other countries within Japan. You can truly find meals that are equal to or even surpass the meals that you'll find when actually visiting those countries. Ishibe is a Romanian restaurant near Gifu Castle, and my choice for dinner before heading to my lodging to enjoy the night fishing experience. Meals are all cooked from scratch and take a while to prep and cook, so this may not be a place you'd want to choose if you're short on time. The site really provides a great view of the food that you can expect to enjoy as well. They do offer takeout meals for two to three people. For 4,500 yen, or for up to 8 to 10 people for 14,500 yen. They have a range of soft drinks and tea for around 500 yen, and beer and even a shot of Romanian spirits that ranges from 500 to 900 yen. The lunch sets can range from 1,500 to 2,000 yen, and dinner sets range from 3,500 to 5,000 yen. There are a variety of soups for 780 yen and main dishes that can range from 980 yen to 1,300 yen per plate. Those can include homemade sausages, mitheti, which is beef rolls made of beef, lamb, and spices, chicken, and tokotera, which is pork cut into cubes with eggs. And let me add that the homemade brownies simply look divine. And just one of the dessert options that are available to you, the dessert ranges from 400 to 980 yen. From there, I'm going to head to enjoy night fishing, viewing through the Gifu City Coromont Fishing Observation. I will include the site to book this experience in our show's travel note. Setting aside part of your night from May 11th through October 15th will allow you to experience this 1300 year old tradition. Of cormorant fishing or ukai on the Nagara River, with the exception of high water times during full moons or harvest moons. On May 11th every year, the start of the season is kicked off with a festival that is filled with drums and fireworks. You will end up beginning with a brief orientation by the fishing master before you begin boarding your boats, usually around 6 15 p.m. to 6 45 p.m., depending on the day. Of the week or public holiday. Prices are around 3,500 yen, $25, for ages 13 and older, or 1,800 yen, or $13, for children 12 and younger. Some boats allow you to add a drink and meal you can enjoy up until the boat leaves docked. Around 7 45, a firework will announce the beginning of the night. And depending on the weather, it will result with your boat going downstream or being anchored for the event. 
The climax of the event is when all six boats chase the fish to the shallows where the birds used for fishing can get at them. Your night will end around 8.30 p.m., but this can be impacted by the number of boats and the weather as well. You don't need to stay at the lodging I've chosen to experience this. <laughs> Instead, you can take a bus from JR Gifu Station or Metsutsu Gifu Station to Nagarabashi, and then about a minute walk to the Gifu Park parking lot. One important thing to take note of is that pricing for lodging that includes this night fishing can greatly increase the cost of your stay as much as double. And it is pricing per person, not just getting a room that gets it for everybody that is in your trip with you. And it may require you to have at least two people to take advantage of this. Sorry to you solo travelers like myself. If that's the case, you'll need to book this separately for yourself using the site I discussed earlier and just enjoy staying somewhere else or just get a single room and enjoy the city's Coromont fishing. If you'd like to avoid being on the water at all, you can enjoy watching the event unfold from the second floor at the Kaseki restaurant Kitai Minochi and enjoy some Japanese cuisine that could include the fish that are being caught before retiring for the night. There is a page on their site for you to make a reservation ahead of time, and I would definitely strongly recommend this if you're counting on them for a viewing opportunity. You can expect to spend around 5,000 yen per person for a meal with this view of fishing nights probably costing you even more. With that, I'm going to call it a night so I can welcome our next tour group in the AM. On to our honorable mention. Next up, for Gifu, I'd like to include another place for you to visit, to eat, and an additional lodging option for your next trip. First up, a unique place to visit in Gifu would be the Kinka Squirrel Village. Apparently, the squirrels are trained and come from Taiwan. You can get gloves and treats from the store, and the squirrels could possibly even eat from your hand. I know that not everyone that listens will agree with this, but thought it was at least worth a mention if it could be something that you enjoy. One thing to be aware of is that if you take pictures, you're asked to not use flash. And if you truly want to feed a squirrel, your best bet is to arrive early as later in the day, they're going to be full from everyone that fed them before you. Times run from 9.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and is located by Gifu Castle. My honorable mention for dining is the Mary Badge, home of a super hamburg made with Mino Quinton, pork that's blended with sautéed onions. If I'd seen the pictures for this meal, it might have been my first choice for the day. The hamburgers can be filled with different types of cheese, kimchi, Chinese yams, spinach, mushrooms, pumpkin, or gravy. If you happen to live in Japan and are near Gifu, you can enjoy some of the Hamburg steaks at home as they're frozen and sold in sets of five for around 4,200 yen. Luckily, there's a site that you can order ahead of time. Please allow 30 minutes for takeout or even make a reservation up to two months in advance to, at the time of this recording. Parking is limited to only six spots. And I noticed a trend of recommendations to book ahead of time if you're looking to eat during the busiest time being, you know, lunch and dinner. All of that aside, everyone seemed super happy about their experiences, the meals they had. One thing to take into account, though, is they do not have a children's menu for those of you traveling with family. Another location I looked into for lodging, if your time frame does not line up with night fishing viewing, or you're looking to explore a less expensive option, is the business style hotel Daiwa Roynet Hotel Gifu that's located near Metsitsu Gifu Station. Pricing was competitive to the big booking sites when I looked at their actual site. You can also add on breakfast 
and have a little more choice of room sizes than if you went through a main travel site. The site offers free cancellation up to a few days ahead of your reservation. One thing to take note of is that they have smoking and non-smoking rooms. So if that matters to you as much as it does to me, I would recommend booking directly through them so I could make sure that I am not getting a smoking room. Twin bed rooms with breakfast is 11,200 yen a night or $79 currently. A room with queen bed is 10,200 yen or $71 a night. And a unique woman's room for 9,200 yen or $64 and a standard dorm size small bed for 8,200 yen or $57 a night. All of these rooms and pricing include breakfast. You can save around 200 yen a night if your Japanese is up to it, and you can sign up for their membership for free at the reception desk. Breakfast offers Japanese and English style buffet normally, but with current COVID restrictions, it's brought to you by plate only. Who knows, by spring and summer, though, we could be back to that buffet normal for them and you get even a wider range of things that you may not even know are there. One nice perk besides the friendly staff that's mentioned again and again through the reviews is that you have washing machines for your clothes, free Wi-Fi, and the ability to drop off your luggage early and even access to a fax machine if the need arises. Our treasure hunt addition for the day is Banana Records Gifu. This shop does have other locations. One of them is in Nagoya. Many reviews mention that this shop is very narrow, but that its location is great as it's located by the Metsutsu Shin Gifu Station. The store, even despite its small size, seems to offer a a lot of vinyl and even some CDs even though it's a chain, doesn't seem to be well known in the area yet. So you might be able to find that hidden treasure for your own collection. The store does have its own website through bananarecord.com that also shares sales for all their other stores. For lodging, I looked into Airbnb as I was unable to find many other appealing options for your stay that wasn't a hostel or a hotel that was either way too expensive or had reviews that were mentioning, I should probably just keep on looking elsewhere. So I found a number of private rooms that were available in shared residences to look through. I found a room that had two twin beds. The owners also had some dogs and cats. The title of this day is Three Quarter Bed Twin Room Guest House Gifu S-U-A-I, listing, private room in home hosted by Hiromitsu, H-I-R-O-M-I-T-S-U. They do, at the time of this recording, offer a full 100% refund if you cancel more than six days in advance. Check-in is between 2 p.m. and 9 p.m. with check-out the following day before 10 a.m. The listing was for $65 a night, offered Wi-Fi access, a washer, free parking, a lock on your door, bathroom, towels, hair dryer, shampoo, and access to a free breakfast. If you'd like to hear us go into more depth about any of the cities we've discussed or have suggestions to future cities as well, please feel free to reach out directly to the show at lostwithoutjapan at gmail.com or join our Patreon and be a part of the polls as we'll vote on where we'll be heading next. We'll be looking to move on to your next travel adventure in Japan with a special episode that will potentially cover, instead of just our normal one-day trips, a two-day, one-night trip, and include a new member to the TKIC staff as well. You have all of that and so much more to look forward to with the next episode of Lost Without Japan. For our housekeeping, please give a follow, a like, and a comment on your favorite streaming services. And feel free to follow the show at Instagram at Lost Without Can. And if you could, just share with your friends and family. 
Anybody that you'd feel that would enjoy these day trips or interviews that we do would be greatly appreciated. Planning the perfect trip to Japan takes a lot of time and research. Let Rediscover Tours 20 years of Japan travel experience make planning your trip as fun and as easy as taking the trip. More details of all the Rediscover Tours services can be found at rediscovertours.com. Looks like we're all ready to call it a night as our thoughts turn to our next adventure as we head away from the city of Gifu and continue our journey through Japan. On behalf of our Lost Without Japan and entire crew, I'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip. And we all look forward to seeing you on board again in two weeks for our next episode. To everyone out there, Oginki Day. Stay well, my friends. Song of the show is from Grammy Award winning jazz artist and Gifu native Shuzuno Ono, who's performing Tutsuki no Sabaku, A Desert Under the Moon. Thank you all for your time. Look so much forward to sharing our next adventure together.